Have you ever wondered exactly what components in your 80s or 90s General Motors vehicle your ECM controls? Well, if so, then stay tuned because coming up in part three of RPO Restorations GM Computer Command Control Series, I'm gonna lay it all out for you. Let's get started. All right, if you haven't checked out part one of the series where I give you a brief overview of the Computer Command Control System, or part two where I explain all the sensors that provided input, do me a favor and check out the description section. I'll include a link to each video. Now on to the number one thing that your ECM controls in your 1981 or newer GM passenger car light truck, and that is part of the fuel delivery system that controls the ratio of air to fuel. Now that may be your mixture control solenoid in your carburetor, your fuel injector or two injectors in your throttle body ignition system, or the series of injectors in your multi-port ignition system. But either way, your ECM is trying to get your fuel to air mixture down a rate of 14.7 parts air to one port fuel. That's the optimal mixture for your catalytic converter to do its job on those pollutants coming out of your tailpipe. Now, if you have a fuel injected system, your ECM controls your idle speed. If you have a carburetor, it may control your idle speed. If you have an idle speed control motor in place of your idle speed screw on your quadrajet or dual jet carburetor. Some cars are also equipped with an idle load compensator. That's a, a solenoid on the carburetor that will increase the idle speed ever so slightly when you're putting, say, a heavy load on the power steering system. That is not controlled by your ECM. That is controlled by engine vacuum. Also, if you have an AC speed up solenoid on your carburetor, something that increases your idle speed 50 to 100 RPMs when you click that AC on, that is controlled by your electronic control module. And last, before we move on from the fuel delivery system, just keep in mind, if you do have a carbureted vehicle, your ECM will only control your air fuel mixture if you are operating in closed loop mode. So if you have a check engine light on, your ECM isn't getting any feedback from your oxygen sensor, and it's not optimizing your air fuel mixture. Next up in items your ECM does control, and that is your spark management system. Whether it be a distributor cap or some kind of other method, if you have a front wheel drive car, there's too many to list, your ECM will advance or retard the timing depending on the conditions your engine is operating in. That's why it's very important, pro tip, when you set your timing, make sure you disable the ECM so it's not providing any advance or retard to your timing so you get a nice base timing. This way the system knows where it's supposed to be and can adjust as necessary. Usually you'll find instructions for that in your service manual or on the emissions label by your radiator. Next up for items your ECM controls and that is your air management system. If you have an air pump on your engine connected to a diverter valve, that valve is usually controlled by your ECM. This system does one of three things. It diverts uh, fresh air to your exhaust manifolds to burn out any unburned fuel as it travels through the manifold to the catalytic converter, making your exhaust a little bit cleaner before it gets there. It also, number two, diverts air to the catalytic converter itself. This way, if your carburetor or fuel injection system isn't quite providing that optimal 14.7 to one ratio, the air management system can add a little fresh air to the catalytic converter to kind of trick it into thinking that it is so the catalytic converter is more efficient. Now in some cases the air management system may also divert this airflow to your air cleaner. We'll do this usually in two cases. Number one, if there's a problem with the system and you're operating in open loop mode, it will divert air to the air cleaner and you'll constantly feel that pressure of air coming through that hose. Or number two, when you take your foot off the gas pedal and you begin to decelerate, in order to prevent a backfire, it'll divert all the fresh air to your air cleaner for a second or two. 
The fourth item that your ECM controls would be your torque converter clutch. If you have a lockup torque converter, mainly find these in later model three speed transmissions and usually all overdrive or four speed automatic transmissions. What this does is it almost acts like a clutch on a manual and locks the drivetrain together so there's nothing in between like the fluid and the torque converter. If you're having problems with this system, you'll notice that the torque converter solenoid will stick if the car's been sitting for a little while. And when you go to a red light, the car will stall out almost as though you're driving a manual and haven't taken your foot and pressed down on the clutch as you come to a stop. So if you're experiencing that symptom, first thing you should do is check your torque converter solenoid. All right, stop, stop, stop. Before we keep going with our list, if you watch the video this far, I think you might like what you see. Do me a favor and hit that like button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out a lot. Also, guys, if you want to follow along with more of these series or more of these tips and tricks for 80s and 90s vehicles, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Now let's keep going. Hey, next up on our list, that is the EGR system or the exhaust gas recirculation system. You should know what an EGR valve looks like. I'll show a picture of one on the screen now so you can get an idea if you don't. What this system does is it diverts a little bit of exhaust gas back in your intake during certain driving conditions to reduce the combustion temperature of your engine. If the combustion temperature is too high, your car produces a lot of oxides of nitrogen, which is a pollutant. You don't want that, so that's why you have an EGR system. The EGR system is usually controlled through some type of solenoid. It's usually combined with another system like the EGR EFE or Evaporative Fuel Emission System, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, this is usually a box you'll find somewhere under the hood, depending on your vehicle model. Uh, and that will activate vacuum to the EGR valve when the ECM sees certain driving conditions that would necessitate such a thing. If your EGR system isn't working properly, or you've disconnected it and not taken steps to compensate for it, you'll usually get a nasty knock or pinging in the engine when you're accelerating. Speaking of the EFE system, the last system we're gonna to cover today is the evaporative fuel emission system. What this system is designed to do is capture vapors that escape from your fuel tank, especially when your car is sitting outside on a hot day, store those vapors in that charcoal canister under the hood, then under certain conditions, your ECM will activate a solenoid and your engine vacuum will draw them into your intake, burning them in the normal combustion process. Some of you guys may also have a charcoal ring inside your air cleaner. There are a lot of myths out there floating around as to what this ring does. It's a charcoal ring. Guess what it's there for? It's to capture fuel vapors that are escaping from your carburetor while your car is parked. When you start the car, and your vacuum starts the suction process, pulling your air intake through that charcoal ring and burning those vapors in your combustion chamber. All right, guys, so that's our list and that'll wrap up our series on the GM Commuter Command Control System. Thank you for watching. This series was not meant to be all encompassing. There may be components I left out because every vehicle is different, but this series was designed just to give you a brief overview and a little bit better understanding of what your General Motors computer command control system does. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.